Wow. Yeah, but the fact that it even did this is impressive to me. Because look at this. Yeah. There is no. There is no. Was I record? Were you recording me? Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing that you can't repeat. That's authentic. You were yeah. really enthused. Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Hopefully, you caught our previous video. Kind of going over this processor here with Bob from Mess Machines. He's a U.S. Importer and distributor. Importer yep. and distributor for the whole U.S. for these incredible firewood processors. We got a 2038R hooked up to the back of this. It's PTO driven. You can get a self-powered version. And if you want all the details, all the bells and whistles and everything else, watch that previous video. That's an in-depth overview. This video here is going to be more of a demonstration on how it works. Just yeah. running the first logs through it. We have six? Yeah, we got six yeah. logs here lined up. Use the, the summit with the grapple on there to get this bad boy loaded up. Yeah, that worked out really well too. That's that's a yeah. nice little tractor. Yeah, it works pretty good. Yeah. So anyway, I don't want to I don't want to waste any time. I want to I want to watch this thing work. So we're gonna let Bob take it through his first. It's it's maiden voyage. Yeah. Let's All see right. let's see what we can do. All right. Let's see what happens. Well, I forgot though. Really quick, I did want to go through the logs that we have, and we've got different wedge options as yeah. well, right? Now right. I was asking Bob, what should we? We got a four way wedge in there now. Is that the right one to use? Or anyway, and he started saying a lot of good information. I thought you guys would want to hear it. So yeah. So. For, it depends on what the what the customer wants or what the end use is going to be. Um, you're talking about throwing it in a bonfire. I think four way would be just perfect for that. And you know we're going to divide this log into four pieces. That's still a pretty that's a that's a nice size of firewood. It's not too big. It's not too small. Um, we could put the six way in. You know, and obviously you're going to divide it into six pieces instead. The guys that are doing like campfire bundles or they want to have a small fire or in a small wood stove in the house. Yeah. That's nice for those smaller splits. Or when you're doing restaurant wood and smoker wood, that type of stuff. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out too is like these ones, these logs have been sitting for a while. You can tell how much because they're, they're all cracking at the ends like this. Yeah. And one of my customers actually told me this before he had a processor from us. He was just uh, using a, a chainsaw and a splitter. And one thing he noticed was that the ends of these, when they're splitting like this, or they've been sitting a long time, they harden up quite a bit too. So this could potentially be harder to split than it would be if we say cut off three or four inches first. Okay. So if you're gonna have a separate spot where you have your cookies or your cutoffs and offcuts and stuff, you know, it'd be nice to cut that off first. Now, hmm. I'll push the envelope and I'm just gonna run it through the processor. Okay. But when you're doing like max diameter, which this machine can do 14 inch, so this stuff is all, is all no problem. When you get to the max diameters, like if, if this was, let's say, a 12 inch diameter log and then you had that crook there, then it becomes a bit more challenging because realistically, you know, you got that hump in it yeah. trying to trying to wrestle in the machine. So, yeah. so this is a good batch of logs to, to, run, to run through here and put it to the test. So yeah, I'm just gonna run, I'm gonna get a log off of the rack here. So I will advance here uh, to, to, run the, to run the log onto the infeed belt. And then I will use the T-handle the joystick to infeed the log. Once we hit the log stopper, I will cut. And as I'm cutting, I'll watch the split chamber. When the log falls decently, I'll push up on this control, which will start the splitter. And then I'll infeed again, start cutting, uh, hit my stopper again, start cutting again. I move the knife height adjustment joystick up and down depending on the size of the log. So basically I'll just keep running now. I'll keep running this, this infeed in, cutting and splitting, and it's all one hand control unless I need to adjust yeah. the knife height in, in between on this log if the log gets bigger as we go. Um, and then I will advance the next log. I 
think this is. what this is. I move the knife height adjustment joystick up and down depending on the size of the log. And on that one gum log we were doing, I had it dropped all the way so it would act as a two-way knife. It was less, less force than to rip that stuff apart. Yeah, I only cut one cookie on that gum one because I was trying to cheat to put the force in a different spot so I would lower it a little bit. It works better if I had, if I would have had like a six inch cookie, that would have been a lot better because I could have put that force on the bottom of that log and sheared off the bottom and then fo focused on the rest of this split. a little bit wow yeah but the fact that it even did this is impressive to me because look at this yeah there is no there is no this has got to be the most challenging time i've had with a 365 and i guess maybe we that's can, what we do at good work yeah, maybe we could say it met its match but we got through everything on the on whatever this is aside from that piece there we got to split in half uh i have never seen wood like this yet um i think it's gum but I don't know. Maybe some of the viewers out there can give us a, know. can give us a better idea. But no like this stuff is all like like look at the grain on this, and the way it comes apart, like it doesn't split. It has to get like sheared and cut apart. So um, <laughs> you saw some struggling in the video there. Basically, when it would get pushed into the knife stuck there, I would take a smaller cookie, which I didn't have, so I was using the full size cookie cut off, yeah. and and putting that. Um, between the splitter and the stuck piece of wood in the knife. So the other thing you can do is work the knife up and down. And if you put the knife all the way up, you can just hit straight down on the stuck piece. Yeah. And in typical situations, you just flip the log around and it'll split. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but this is like, you gotta get a close up on some of that. I mean, this is just, I can't, <laughs> I looking at that, like that is the most bizarre, look at that. Oh yeah, wow, wow. So there was no bark on it, and I don't, I just, I don't know what it is. We, the hickory log was no issue, um, and yeah, after we dumped the stuff, after we dumped this trailer, then we're gonna have another hickory log and a birch log. So, yeah. um, we should be able to make quick work of those. But yeah, that's how. So, yeah. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by Rimguard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So, um we just got done running whatever on earth that last logs, those last logs were. And we got a nice hickory log here, and the guy behind the camera wanted some uh, smoker chunks. We did that in another video. So we're gonna swap in the eight-way knife 
And then I'm just gonna cut off some cookies. Uh, I'm gonna have to open the hood each time so I don't, or, open, or hit the stop lever so that the splitter doesn't engage. So I'll cut all the cookies, line them up in the split chamber, then hit the split, and uh, then we should get a bunch of nice chunks out this way. So we'll do that with the first few cuts, and then uh, after that, he's, well, we'll see, what, we'll see what we end up making with it. Yeah. Maybe we make a big pile of it. Okay. Yeah. It's good stuff. So right now we're gonna lower the knife all the way with this joystick. Uh, we'll drop the knife all the way to its lowest position, and then we'll go under the machine, and you'll see there's a cotter pin here. We'll pull out that cotter pin, and then the big pin, I don't remove completely, I just slide out so it's out of the knife. Uh, then we open the hood, and we flip up the uh, saw arm so it's out of the way, and then we lift the current knife out, and you can see it's a cassette style knife, so you kind of have to get it up and then go diagonal out, and then drop the new knife in, put the pins back in, drop your uh, log stopper arm back in place, and then uh, I just do a test run, move the knife up and down a couple times to make sure that we are engaged and everything is moving freely, and then we're able to start cutting with the, the new knife change. This last log, okay. uh, if it was mine, I probably would have kicked aside. But sometimes it's fun to push the limits, and that's exactly what we did. So we had 14 inch diameter and a lot of crooks and bumps. So in order to get that to go through the machine, there's some uh, creative engineering that needs to be done. So we needed to uh, bring it in and out of the infeed a couple of times and rotate it as we were, uh, as we were cutting it. And um, what I typically do for those is I'll face the crook or the knot the bend towards me so it's not down on the infeed belt and it's not pointing straight up towards the log clamp and it's not towards the back of the machine where it can bind back there either. You get a little bit more forgiveness towards the front of the machine. Um, the downside there is that when you bring that in, then when you bring the saw down, the saw might not cut through it all the way, which we ran into a couple of times. So in that case as well, I opened the hood quick so that the splitter wouldn't try to start when that log was still hanging there, you know, because we, we did an actual saw cycle and then after the saw cycle, the splitter starts. So uh, that was a pretty good visual of showing you, you know, what it will be like if you're running max diameter. You know, the, uh, one of the comparisons I heard was like, you know, a, a car will go max speed will be 155 miles an hour, but you don't want to drive 155 all the time, right? So this will do 14 inch diameter, but really 12 inch, 12 inch is the sweet spot for it. On this last log, some of these, some of these, I would call them blocks when you cut them off and they drop into the split chamber, they were big pieces. And, you know, that has no problem going through the four-way knife, which is pretty impressive. And it's a good way to show <laughs> the difference in species of wood, too. I think that was some oak, and so that oak versus that uh, gum that we were dealing with before. 
you know, we were max diameter and knotty and we were going through the four-way knife with no problem. But whereas that, that gum was pretty straight, the grain was definitely not. Okay, so we actually just finished cutting wood, but I forgot all about this stick right here. Wanted to mention this to you. So a couple things, Yappa on there, of course, but since 1977, so they've been around a while and then made in Finland. Yes. What does that mean? Yeah, so this machine comes from Hapa Yarvi, Finland. Um, they build their machine out of Finnish steel. It's not Chinese steel. They're using uh, components, hydro high quality hydraulic components. You've got Hydroforce, you've got, uh, for the saw motors, you're using um, Cassapa, Bravini, Caproni, uh, stuff, stuff from Italy. Uh, if you look at some of the hydraulic hoses, they're made in Germany. <laughs> um, obviously, inevitably, some pieces will probably come from China. I know like the hand crank winch on the conveyor comes from China, okay. but the most important parts of the machine are, are built with, with European parts. And um, they build the stuff strong. The, the, these log racks, you could drop a lot of stuff on without damaging it. Um, they built the thing strong in a small package. So they're all about efficiency. Um, and, and as you can see, um, when running, when running the, the right size wood through it, it's pretty freaking efficient. <laughs> and then one last thing as well, as far as getting parts, something inevitably is yeah. gonna, gonna break, right? Yeah, so um, we pride ourselves in being able to take care of the customer as soon as possible. Uh, we have a very good parts stock in our warehouse in Wisconsin. We ship out from there. Typically, if a customer calls and needs something, we overnight it to them, <laughs> especially if they're running a business where they're selling firewood and this is what they're relying on. Yeah. Um, Inevitably, there's some things that happen where we don't have the part. Okay. If, we, if we don't have the part, getting it air freighted from Finland is usually five to seven days. Okay. It's, been, it's been really quick that way. Um, one of the things I'll say about the support from Yapa is they've been phenomenal. Even during like midsummer break, which is a Finnish holiday where a lot of people just take, they take a lot of time off. Hmm. These guys are still answering their phones, answering questions to me. When we run into an issue, we get an answer right away. Uh, and, and that's how I want to operate. That's how I know you want to operate. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, that's a recipe for success for everybody, including the customers when they need something. Okay, sorry, last thing just came to mind, warranty. Warranty, one year on the whole machine. Okay. Um, if it's something that we can walk through with the customer replacing, let's say, um, let's say a valve or a hose breaks or something like that, we can help instruct them on how to replace that via phone email, uh, video, text, all that stuff, okay. and we can send the part to them. Okay. If it's something a lot more serious, then we would work either with a local repair shop to them or we would come out to their place and get it figured out then. Okay. You know what? Well, we are all done. That was successful. Yeah. That last one was like maxing it out. Wasn't yes, it? yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> that was max diameter and it had knots and it had some crookedness to it. So <laughs> if you want to know what manual labor, you, uh, what you'll need to do to get max diameter that's crooked in here, that was it. Yeah. So anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Again, you can get these through Goodworks tractors. It, it, it's, it's set up, well, uniquely, all right? So you can go through Goodworks tractors, go to Metz and Machines. That's where these things are going to ship out of, all right? And they're going to ship nationwide right to you. We cover how that comes on a flatbed. So this setup here is 1,800-ish pounds. Yeah, yep. You got to have, have something big to get it yeah, offloaded or go yep. to a business, a buddy's place, your place of work, whatever, have a forklift offloaded there and then, yep. and then get it home after that. Now for anything else, maybe you want a grapple to go along with it or something else for your tractor, for the front end loader, the three point hitch, we'd love to help you out at goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country as well. I want to thank Bob for making the long drive in. It was like a seven hour drive. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. It was a great day. A great yeah. day. No rain. Yeah. We're having a really good time out here. Yeah. So if you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button right down below. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.